Good evening and welcome to this meeting of Breck Road Baptist Church. We're really grateful that you've chosen to be with us tonight and hope that you've come with a heart and mind ready to hear from the Lord. It's been a beautiful day and God has met with us in a wonderful way this morning. I trust uh, He's been good to you this afternoon as well and I uh, hope you've come now with a heart and mind uh, ready and off, set off the, deci- the distractions that are easily there. And so as we come together in this unique way, let us come together and worship the Lord together. And so in order to do that, there are a few things perhaps you might need to do. I do want to encourage you as much as you can, be wholeheartedly involved in the service today. As we sing the hymns, sing along. As we pray, you pray as well. And uh, I know the Lord will meet with you today. Will you just stop what you're doing and let's bow together and ask the Lord to meet with us this evening. Let's pray. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we come before Thee again and thank Thee that we can come into Thy presence. Thou art a good and gracious God, and we are grateful that even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We are thankful that though we are frail and unworthy, Thou, Lord, art able to take, Lord, our lives and use them for Thy glory, and we give Thee the glory and the praise for it. We know that any good thing in our life that happens Any good thing in us is because of Thee. Help us tonight, O Lord, to look unto Thee, to trust in Thee, to walk with Thee by faith. We pray that Thou, Lord, remove every distraction out of our heart. Lord, we pray that Thou wilt take every thought, every word into subjection tonight and help us, Lord, to bring them unto Thee. Our heart is in need to hear from Thee and, Lord, hear from heaven. We pray that Thou wilt speak directly to us. Please give us faith and grace and help us to look unto Thee. We pray, Lord, please be with this meeting as we sing hymns and as we read Thy Word. May we, Lord, see Thee for who Thou truly art. Please, Lord, we ask that Thou wilt give us great faith and trust in Thee. Please, Lord, we ask, move in this meeting in an unusual way. And even as we are in a, a unique circumstance, we pray that, Lord, Thou wilt still speak and work and, Lord, bring glory out of our lives for Thee. We love Thee. We thank Thee for this time. Please meet with us now, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing our first hymn, uh, Send the Light, the Blessed Gospel Light. And as you're sitting there, I hope you'll sing with us this wonderful hymn, a good gospel hymn, Send the Light, the Blessed Gospel Light. Let it shine forevermore. Let's sing together, Send the Light. Evermore. 
Very good. Well, let's take our copy of God's Word, and I invite you to turn with me to the Old Testament book of Exodus. The Old Testament book of Exodus. We'll have a look tonight at Exodus chapter number 14, and we will begin reading in verse number 1 and read all the way down to verse number 15. Will you read with me? And beginning at Exodus chapter number 14 and verse number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn that they turn in camp before Pahiroth and between Migdol, and the sea over against Balzaphon. Before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land, the wilderness hath shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them. And I will, on, I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all the, his host that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people and said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took six hundred chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh the king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after, after them all the horses and the chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping the sea beside Pihiroth before Balzaphon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, thou hast taken us away to die in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou dealt with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak thou unto the children of Israel that they go forward. And we'll stop there in verse number 15. And may the Lord bless the reading of His Word and hold your place there. We'll come back to Exodus 14 in just a little bit longer. And so let's take our hymn books once more. And you don't have a hymn book, but we'll sing on the screen. Let's sing another wonderful song. Sound the battle cry. See the foe is nigh. A wonderful gospel hymn. Let's sing it together. Sound the battle cry. The foe is thy, raise the standard high for the Lord. Gird your armor on, stand firm every one, lest your cause upon his holy word. Rouse them, soldiers, rally round the banner, ready, steady, pass the word upon. Onward, forward, shout the loud hosanna, Christ is captain of the mighty throne. Strong to meet the foe, marching on we go, while our cause we know must prevail. Shield and banner bright, gleaming in the light, battling for the right we can ne'er fail. Rouse then, soldiers, rally round the banner, Ready, steady, pass the word of all. Onward, forward, shout the loud hosanna. Christ is captain of the mighty throne. O thou God of all, hear us when we call. Help us one and all by thy grace. When the battle's done 
and the victory's won. May we wear the crown before thy face. Rouse then, soldiers, rally round the banner. Ready, steady, pass the word alone. Onward, forward, shout the loud Rosanna. Christ is captain of the mighty throne. Good. Well, at this time in our meeting, we like to take a moment and uh, go through our bulletin. If you don't have one, we want to encourage you to please go on to our website and you can download that. It's at breckroadbc.org.uk and you can download our brochure or sorry, not our brochure, but our bulletin. And you can see the different prayer requests that we mentioned and things that we're praying for as a church. And so please go ahead and do that. And we want to encourage you to do that. I do want to say we need to have a few things that we're praying for and uh, receive some news of some different prayer requests today and um, some different people that we're praying for. First of all, we want to continue to remember our world leaders at this time. And we want to continue to pray for those who are making decisions that impact us. And I'm praying, I hope you're praying as well, that they will something will happen where we can at least begin to meet in some way, shape, or form. And so other than just with this camera. It's not that I don't enjoy this, but I'd love to be able to be together, and I know you would too. So let's pray that God will open up those doors and pray that those who are making those decisions would have great wisdom in doing so. Also, I want to encourage you as well to continue to pray for those who are vulnerable and those who are going out and working at the NHS. Let's remember them in our prayers. If you remember, I'd ask you to pray for Lynn. Lynn is um, a lady who comes and is with us sometimes on a Sunday evening. She doesn't always come here. She goes to another church just up the road. Uh, but Lynn has two daughters, and Steph and Jenny, and both of them are out in the community and working. Uh, Steph is a, uh, is a carer in the community. She works long hours. And, of course, when you're out there working with people exposed to the possibility of the virus, and so she has requested prayer for Steph, and also pray for Jenny as well. And this is not our Jenny that's here, but um, Jenny is a nurse. This is Lynn's daughter. She's a nurse on a COVID-19 uh, recovery unit in one of the hospitals here in Liverpool. And we want to remember her in our prayers and ask the Lord would watch over her and protect her at this time. And so please continue to pray for Lynn and uh, continue to keep her family in our prayers. On that same note, continue to remember Robbie and Linda, and we're praying for them and asking God to work in their life, and uh, right now they're still going through the, the bad news of their uh, a loved one, a cousin of Robbie's who's passed away, and we want to continue to remember them in, their, in our prayers. The funeral is due to be on this Tuesday, and Robbie is able to go, but due to all of the restrictions, not everyone is able to go, and so I know they would appreciate your prayers uh, very much so during this time. Continue to remember Wayne and Carol, and let's remember uh, Wayne's brother Russell, and continue to pray for him. Uh, he has terminal cancer and not been given long to live, and we're praying that God would open up his heart and he would come to know Christ as his Lord and Savior. And so please pray for him uh, during this time. Also, we want to continue to remember as well to continue to pray for uh, Eddie and Jenny. Um, Eddie is trying to sell his house, but Eddie and both Jenny are going to be looking for home soon and looking for another place to live. And so please do pray for them and keep them in your prayers as we're going forward. We're asking God to, to really provide for them in a, in a wonderful way. It's a very difficult time. You can imagine looking for a house and, and all of this or looking for a place to, to rent. And we know that God is able to. So please keep them uh, in your prayers. And I know they would greatly appreciate that. Also, in, in all of this, we want to continue to remember to pray for our Sunday school children. I had a wonderful message today um, through text message and uh, even yesterday of young people who had downloaded perhaps the coloring sheet off the computer and were able to color it and fill it out. And that was a great encouragement. And we saw some other ones who made their own. They weren't able to download and print it out, but they were able to make their own coloring sheet. And so that was a real encouragement. And we praise God for our young people. And let's continue to remember them in your prayers. And maybe you don't know them all by name, uh, but nevertheless pray for them. And they are, they are our next generation, and uh, one day they're going to be sitting where you're sitting. And what, Well, hopefully they're in here, they're not sitting at home, but they're going to be in here and, and working and laboring in the church. And, uh, you know, we place a big emphasis on the children's ministry here. And um, my pastor back in the States always says, you, re you reap a harvest where you place an emphasis. And we believe it's very important to reach the next generation 
And uh, where there are no little lambs, one day there'll be no sheep. And so we uh, want to continue to remember to pray for these little ones and uh, pray that God would bring us back together again soon and Sunday school and Friday club and all those things could be uh, back together again. And so please keep those things in prayer. I think that's nearly all of the requests that I have. Um, one other thing that I want to mention, I mentioned it in the morning, I mentioned it last Sunday and have been mentioning it as well and just continue to pray about it. Um, we want to continue the live stream and God willing, we're going to do that. And uh, I believe it's of the Lord. Uh, it's been a great tool that the Lord has used to keep us together as a church, but also to reach out to other people who uh, maybe aren't able to come to every service or who never come to a service, but they'll tune in online. And I have no problem with that. I want them to eventually one day to come into the church. But I think any means of being able to get the gospel out is a wonderful tool. And so we want to continue this uh, going forward. And so we've been praying about it and believe it's of the Lord that we should set up a proper live streaming uh, setup here at the church. Now, if you were to come in today and look at it, it looks where, where I'm from, we would perhaps call this a hillbilly setup. And what we mean by that is it, it's got cords and it looks nothing professional. It looks like somebody just threw it all together. And that's because that's what happened. We found out about four days before the Sunday service that we were no longer going to be able to meet properly and we needed a live stream system. And so we did everything we could to get all of it ready. Um, and so right now we're operating off the very basic things, but we do need to upgrade the system in order to continue. At the moment, there's a table right in the middle of the, the church building. Uh, there's a big camera right at the entryway. There are cords all over the floor. And that would not be a, a, a safe uh, place for us to meet when we are able to meet back together again. And so we have been praying and we want to be able to, to set up properly. We need to have a proper sound booth um, in the church, at the back of the church. We need to get a proper camera um, that would be able to, to live stream the service. We need to have proper software on a computer and some different cords and cables that will be needed uh, to run and make sure all the internet and the sound and all of that works properly. Uh, the estimated total that that's going to cost is around a, a thousand pounds. And so we, we want you to consider and prayerfully consider giving towards that. Now, if you're just visiting with us, by no means am I asking any, anybody to give, give. And I know that the Lord is going to provide. Um, this is just an opportunity as a church where we can give to keep this ministry going. And by all means, this is an investment. This is going to continue to go out uh, for many years to come, God willing. And so if you're interested in helping us with that, uh, you can give. We've set up an online giving on the church website. As you would normally give your tithe or give to missions, uh, you also can click down and there's an opportunity to give to the live stream. And you may say, well, I can, I can only give a pound. I can only give five pounds. It doesn't matter. If you want to give to it, you're welcome to. And uh, we know that God is going to provide, and we're going to set that up, God willing. And so please uh, pray and, and give along with us as we try to do this in the near future. And so keep that in your mind and, and praying about it and ask what God would, would have you to give towards it. And uh, so please pray with us, and uh, if you have any questions about it at all, please message me, call me, email me, whatever you may want to do, but please let me know, and uh, I hope it's been an encouragement to you, and I hope you'll pray about the live streaming. Um, also, we want to continue to remember our missionaries, pray for Danny and Tristan, and continue to remember them in our prayers, and there are a lot of other good things that are happening. Um, so let's, let's keep these different things in our prayers and ask God to work in a special way. If you have any prayer requests, do let us know. You can message um, just in the bottom of the screen there. You can email, you can ring, whatever you would like to do. But let us know how we can help you and how we can pray together. And uh, give us any praises, special ways God's working in your life. We'd love to hear from you. Any communication is great. And so let's take a moment now and bring these different requests uh, to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to work in, a, in these different things. Will you just stop where you are and pray with me? Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we come before Thee yet again and thank Thee that we can come into Thy house. We praise Thee, Lord, that Thy, thy throne room is open 24-7. There's not a time at night where we are not able to call upon Thee. It's not too early in the morning where we can't call upon Thee. We are thankful that not only can we access Thee at any time, but also that we can come boldly into thy throne room. 
We're not fearful or coming sheepishly. We know that we come not on our own merit, but on the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that, Lord, Thou wilt please uh, continue to work in our church and, Lord, continue to work in our people during this time. Watch over those who are poorly and we pray protect them and watch over them. Be with those who are going out and facing, uh, Lord, the, the real front lines of the battle in the NHS and we pray that Thou wilt be with them and guide them and go with them daily. We pray specifically tonight, Lord, for the daughters of Lynn and we pray for Steph and we pray for Jenny as they both go out into the community and they are exposed to the virus and working long hours, we do pray for Thy divine hand of protection. Please watch over them and I pray give Lynn the strength and the comfort she needs um, each day as she trusts them in Thy hands and has to help them as well in many different things. So please be with them. Lord, we ask that Thou would give great wisdom concerning uh, this uh, live streaming of the service. We believe it's of Thee. Lord, our hand was forced to do this. We didn't go looking to live stream, but Thou didst bring it to us. And it has been a great tool that has kept many people together and has been used to get the gospel out to many uh, homes where perhaps it has not been. And we praise Thee for it. We ask now that as we look to the future and try to plan going forward, please help us. Lord, please provide. We know that Thou art able to, and we pray that Thou will provide all the funds that are necessary to set up the live stream. And we ask, God, that Thou wilt uh, even burden the hearts of Thy people now. And Lord, I pray that Thou wilt provide all that we need. And Lord, that we would be able to continue to broad, live stream the gospel uh, around Liverpool and throughout the world. Use it even tonight. Use tonight, Lord. Use this meeting to speak to the hearts of people. We pray that Thou wilt draw us closer to Thee. As believers, may we have a greater faith. We pray if there's someone that is watching and they are seeking and do not know Thee as Lord, may tonight be the night of their salvation. Help us as a church, Lord, in the moment where we are standing still, help us, Lord, to continue to go forward in our inner man, to go forward in our faith, not limiting what Thou art able to do. Help us, Lord, to attempt great things for Thee and expect great things from Thee, we pray. Lord, continue to meet with our people. Strengthen our hand. Help us to, Lord, follow after Thee. Be with, Lord, each person tonight as we go out into a new world, into a, a new week. We pray that Thou wilt guide us and go before us. Give us wisdom and grace. Help us, Lord, to be the witnesses that we need to be. And as we come to Thy meeting tonight, quiet our hearts. Deal with us right here, Lord. Speak through Thy Word, we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. We'll take our hymn books, unless you have one. We'll sing one more hymn in just a moment. Uh, we'll sing another wonderful gospel hymn. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, and I hope you're pressing. And Paul said he pressed to the mark that's in Christ Jesus. And so I hope you're pressing. Let's sing this wonderful song together. I'm pressing on the, uh, the upward way.
lights of town, or plant my feet on higher ground. Hail the utmost high, though rough the way, and hard the fight, my song while climbing shall resound, Lord lead me on to higher ground. Lift me up and let me stand By faith on heaven's table land Where love and joy and light abound Lord, plant my feet on higher ground Lord, lead me up the mountainside I dare not climb without my guide And heaven gained I gaze around with grateful heart for higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land where love and joy and light to pound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Well, I'd like to invite you to take your copy of God's Word and turn with me tonight to the Old Testament book of Exodus. Exodus chapter number 14. Exodus chapter number 14, and tonight we're looking at verses 1 through 15, but in particular, I want to draw your attention to verse number 10. If you'll notice with me tonight, Exodus chapter 14 will begin in verse number 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, thou hast taken us away to die in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is it not this, is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. And stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. We'll stop there in verse number 13. I want to draw your attention tonight to that phrase that we find in verse number 13. Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still. Fear ye not, and stand still. Tonight, perhaps a phrase, a phrase in the Bible has never meant so much to you as it has right now. Standing still is perhaps something that you feel like you're going through at this moment. As a matter of fact, your last two months have been nothing but a standstill. You've been stuck at home and unable to do anything physically. As we come to this passage, Moses has got the children of Israel, the Lord has led him and God has led Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage. Many of us are familiar with that story. Egypt, the most powerful nation in the world at that time, God delivered His people, the children of Israel, out of their bondage and He hardened Pharaoh's heart and brought ten plagues upon Egypt. And finally, after the tenth plague, Pharaoh said, Let my people, or Pharaoh allowed, sorry, Pharaoh allowed the children of Israel to be departed from Egypt. As Moses began to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt to the promised land, we find that Pharaoh's heart was hardened. He began to say in his heart, Why did I allow the children of Israel to go? Let's pursue after them. And so Pharaoh begins to pursue after them with great fervor. He has his chariots, a vast army, coming after the children of Israel. Now, the children of Israel, the nation of Israel, were nothing but slaves. They weren't skilled fighters. They weren't skilled warriors. They were people that had been for 400 years under Egyptian bondage. And many historians believe that there could have been a million, up to two million people in the nation at that time. And Moses is leading them out of Egypt into the promised land. Well, as they're following Moses, and as they're following him into the promised land, they come to the Red Sea. And as they come to the Red Sea, they're unable to pass in the Red Sea, and they're looking behind them now, 
and they can see Pharaoh and his chariots off in the distance. It is in the context of that moment that Moses says, stand still. I want you to see tonight, we're going to draw our attention to that phrase, but before we go any further, I want to say tonight that God's desire in your life, as we've said here many times, God's desire for you is that you go forward. As a matter of fact, the pilgrim pathway that you and I walk as believers is to be the ascending life. We are to be going forward in our walk with the Lord. And as we sung just a bit a minute ago, we're to be pressing unto higher ground. We're to be taking steps of faith and going forward with the Lord. But I want you to see tonight as we come to this passage that sometimes going forward is not always the way we expected. David Livingston, the famous missionary to Africa, said, I'm willing to go anywhere so long as it be forward. And that should be our attitude tonight. But the circumstance that we find tonight in this passage is not going forward in the way that you would expect. It is not going forward in the way that the children of Israel expected. You see, sometimes to go forward, you and I must stand still. Sometimes to go forward in your life spiritually, you must stand still. Standing still is a command we find here from Moses, but ultimately it was from the Lord. And standing still is the most difficult thing that you and I find to do. But sometimes in order to go forward, we must stand still. Can I say tonight, perhaps that's what's needed in your life. In order for you to go forward tonight, in order for you to go forward, we must stand still. You see, fear Fear is what keeps us from going forward. That is a wonderful tool from Satan that he uses in a miraculous way to keep you and I from taking steps forward in our progress with the Lord. The children of Israel, when they got to this moment, they began to look back and say, we should have, we should have stayed in Egypt. We shouldn't have gone forward. This was, a, this was a terrible idea. Moses has brought us out here to die. They wanted to go back. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, Fear ye not, stand still. Fear was telling them that they wanted to go back. They began to doubt. They began to wonder, is God really in this? And Moses says, stand still. I want to give you four things that stand still is tonight for you and for me. Stand still to the children of Israel was a call to faith. Standing still was a call to faith. As they were coming to this certain circumstance, Moses said unto the children of the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still went against the very natural instinct of the children of Israel. As they were standing there, we would call them perhaps sitting ducks. They were unable to do anything about their circumstance. The Pharaoh and his army was coming up from behind them. They were stuck literally in between two rocks. They were unable to go to their right unable to go to their left. They couldn't run behind and they couldn't go forward because of the Red Sea. And so their natural instinct was to do something about it, but there was nothing that they could do. And so when Moses cries out to them and he says, stand still, he was saying unto them, have faith in God. He was literally saying unto them, have faith in God. Standing still sometimes is what is necessary in your life and in my life. It was necessary in the life of the children of Israel. Why? Because if they were going to see the salvation of the Lord, they had to stand still and rest in Him. You see, in order for you and I to go forward in our life, sometimes God brings us to a moment where you can't go right or left. You can't go forward or backward. As a matter of fact, you may not even know where to go. And God says, stand still. Standing still is not looking at the surrounding, it is looking up. It's looking unto God and having faith that though I'm in a circumstance and I don't know exactly how God is going to do this, I am going to look unto Him. I'll lift my eyes unto the hills. My help comes from the Lord. Standing still is a call to faith. Standing still, though, goes against your natural instinct and my natural instinct. 
we always have to be able to work something out. There always has to be a way that we can scheme or plan or make the situation better. There always has to be a way where we can dig down deep in our pockets and we can finally pull out and we can make the situation better. Or perhaps if I was smarter or more clever, then I could work it out. Maybe, maybe if I had more ability, then I could, I could work this situation out of it. Maybe if I could phone a friend or I could look for help. And God brought the children of Israel to this point and said, stand still. Literally, there was nothing that they could do. God brings us to those moments so that we have faith in Him. Standing still, not doing anything, not running back, not going to the left, not going to the right, not going forward, just standing still was a call to faith. It was a call to faith that God was going to take care of them. You and I sometimes, we worry and we doubt and we wonder, does God really care about us? And I tell you, if His eye is on the sparrow, if He takes care of the lilies, shall God not take care of you? As we come to this passage, we see that stand still was a call to faith. But not only was it a call to faith, it was a call of direction. You say, stand still was a call of direction? Absolutely. Absolutely. As Moses said here, stand still, fear ye not, and see the salvation of the Lord. He will show you today to the Egyptians. He was saying in essence to them, God brought you to this point. The direction that you and I are intending to go is forward. God brought them here with the intent of going forward. Imagine that, Moses leading the children of Israel out of Egypt and they come to the point and they, they get there and he says, stand still. Why are they standing still? Because they need to go forward. It's a call of direction. There's no turning back. There's no going from where God brought me from. The only way to go is forward. There's no turning to the right or no turning to the left. Standing still was a call of direction. But don't you know, in that moment where it's difficult and it's hard, Satan is whispering in your ear and he's saying, you shouldn't have come here. You shouldn't have done that. You made the wrong mistake. Turn around. It was better in Egypt. Oh, you at least had, you had provision in Egypt. You had a place to live in Egypt. You could eat food in Egypt. And Moses, oh, you were so foolish to follow Moses. All he's done is brought you out here to die. And what happens? That's what happens when things get, dif get difficult, don't they? When things get difficult, we, our mind begins to go back and think how good it was then. Isn't that just like Satan to, to take us back and make slavery look good? That's literally what the children of Israel were looking back at. And they said, I'd rather go back to the chains. I'd rather be back in bondage than to die here in the wilderness. You see, fear manipulates every situation. It even makes slavery look good. And when Moses said, stand still, he said, stop for a moment and know that God brought you here to bring you forward. He didn't bring you here to take you back. And some of you know that God has done wonderful things in your life. He has brought you forward in great strides. He's opened your eyes and you see Him in a whole new light. The past year you've seen God work in your life in a miraculous way. And then God brings us to a, a point where things aren't exactly going the way we need to go and we don't know exactly what to do. Stand still and, and wait and see the salvation of the Lord. God doesn't want you to go back. God doesn't want you to retreat. He wants you to go Forward, And so we see tonight that that's exactly what the, the children of Israel needed here. As Moses said unto the children of Israel, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. He will show you today for the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Stand still was not only a call of faith, it was a call of direction. Not only that, I want you to see tonight that it wasn't just a call of direction. Stand still was a, was a call of expectation. It was a call of expectation. As he said, stand still, as Moses cried out, stand still, he said, see and see the salvation of the Lord. In other words, Moses was expecting God to do something. 
There was no doubt they were in a difficult situation. There was no doubt that it was an uncomfortable situation. But he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. In other words, I expect that God is going to do something about this current situation. As you and I come to a moment perhaps which is a standstill moment in our life where we, we don't exactly see things clearly and we don't necessarily see a, a clear way forward, we must expect God to do something. William Carey, the famous missionary that went to Calcutta, India, India and was used of God in a miraculous way, is famously quoted by saying this, attempt great things for God, expect great things from God. The context of that phrase is, is even greater, I think. He said this in a meeting as he stood in, a, in, a, he was stood in the midst of a, a group of preachers, really. He was standing in the midst of a congregation of men who knew the Lord and loved the Lord. And William Carey, we call him the pioneer, the father of modern missions. He stood in the midst of a bunch of revered men and he was bringing this idea of modern missions, of going to the uttermost parts of the world and to reach the heathen and to reach people who had never heard the gospel. He stood up in the congregation and he spoke these words, attempt great things for God, expect great things from God. And don't you know that as he stood there in front of a bunch of revered men, men who knew the Lord, one man stood up and said, Mr. Carey, sit down. If God wants to convert the heathen, He will do so without the help of you or me. And Mr. Carey could have very easily stopped right then. He could have easily put his hands in his pocket and said, well, it's time to go home. But no, the, the very phrase, the idea of expectation was that God was going to do something. He expected God to do something and He would not be deterred from it even if revered men discredited his idea. Him and another man they, and a few other uh, faithful pastors started what we know as the, the, the Baptist Mission Society. And as they began, they started with a very low income. They didn't have much. I think they brought together something like 13 pounds and 84 pence. It was not a large amount. And William Carey said, I'll go down into the depths. They determined they were going to go into India. And William Carey said, I will go down into the depths of India as long as you'll hold the ropes. And so William Carey then set sail for India, expecting God to do a great work. And do you know how long he served in India, even by his own testimony? How long he served in India before he ever even saw his first convert? William Carey says of his own work, it took him seven years. Seven years laboring in India, doing gospel work, preaching the gospel, speaking to people, learning the language, uh, developing uh, the life skills needed that would be there to reach the people. And he labored and he labored and he labored for seven years and he saw his first convert at the end of seven years. Today we still revere his name. We herald him as a champion of modern missions. But what, what, was he, what is he saying about us? Expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. You and I, we don't want to stand still. When we are standing still, we don't expect God's going to do anything about our current situation. We look at all the tasks and we perhaps don't expect God to do much. But standing still expects God to work in miraculous ways. As Moses cried out to the children of Israel, he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. In other words, God has brought you this far. He's going to do something. And we need to stop listening to the voice of Satan and everyone else who says, God's just forgot about you. He's not going to listen to you. And we need to stand still and wait and see God move. Stand still, William Carey, seven years in India. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And missionary after missionary, if you read any of the histories, you see that God worked through men that just would stand still and expect God to do wonderful things. If God is going to do something in your life tonight, we must get our minds out of the idea that a situ our situation is far too difficult. We must get our, our minds off the idea that our circumstance is far too hard. 
We must expect God to work. Why? Because we're going forward. Going forward is what God wants us to do. And if He wants us to go forward, then we expect God to work and to move. Standing still was a call of confidence. It was a call of confidence. Moses stood up there, and I'll remind you that Moses, when he began, was not the most confident man. Moses, when he stood and when he spoke, Moses, at the very beginning, he was unworthy. He gave all kinds of reasons why he couldn't be used of God. This is before Exodus 14. Before Exodus 14, when he was out on the backside of the desert, when he was really hiding from society and didn't think he could ever be used again, God met with him and he called him to do this work and Moses said, I'm not capable. I stutter too much. I'm not able to lead. Nobody, nobody will listen to me. Nobody will follow me. And there's Moses at the beginning and what a transformation has taken place in his life from the burning bush until now because now Moses is standing up speaking very clearly in front of two million people and he says to all of them who are afraid, he says to all of them who are terrified, stand still. And he says confidently. He doesn't say it shakingly. He doesn't say, well, maybe, maybe you'll see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And here's his confidence in verse number 14. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. That they go forward. Moses, when he said stand still, it was in confidence that God was going to work. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says this, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. Where did Moses' confidence come from? Moses' confidence came from an intimate relationship with the Lord. He knew God. He knew that God had spoken to him. He knew that God had dealt with him. And because Moses knew the Lord, in the moment where he had to stand still, he knew God would do something. You say, where do I get the confidence from? Where do I get the faith? Where do I get the expectation? I, where, where do I get the, the, the direction from the Lord in this standing still moment? It comes from spending time with the Lord. Moses is the one who gave the admonition to stand still. The children of Israel then listened, but Moses was the one who said, stand still. How did Moses know to stand still? Well, of course, Moses had a, un, he had a relationship with the Lord. He knew the Lord intimately. And as he said, stand still, he had confidence that God was going to do something. In your life today, whatever you may be going through, wherever you're at right now, you may be wondering direction. You may be wondering where you're to go. You may be wondering what to do or how you're going to get out of this situation. Can I tell you what's needed? It's just to stand still. It, just to, maybe if you're unsure about what you're to do next, don't do anything until God gives you direction, until He gives you clarity. Stand still and God will move you forward. Expect God to work. Did He bring you this far to let you die in the wilderness? Oh no. He brought you this far to get glory out of your life. But there are some times in your life and in my life where going forward is impossible unless we wait upon the Lord. It goes against your natural instinct. It goes against your every desire. It, it limits your ability, but it strengthens your faith. Why? Because you are in standing still, you are completely dependent that your salvation is coming from the Lord. And by salvation, I mean your deliverance out of your situation right now. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And maybe you're watching tonight from wherever you are. And maybe you're wondering, what is all of this business about standing still and seeing the salvation of the Lord? It is the idea that salvation here, the deliverance for the children of Israel, was not anything they could do for themselves. It was something God had to do. And tonight you may be watching and you may be wondering about all of this. Well, what does this have to do with me? You may be seeking. You say, I'm not a Christian. I don't know about this business of being a Christian. Can I say the principle really applies to you as well? 
In order for you to see salvation, you must come to your wit's end. You must see there's nothing that you can do. You must see that there's no way you can get yourself out of this predicament. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The only way to truly see salvation is to come to your wit's end and see that salvation is of the Lord. The Lord Jesus died on the cross for you. He made a way for you to be forgiven tonight. And you can come to Him by faith. The children of Israel learned a great truth. As they stood still, as they trusted in the Lord, the Lord enabled them to go forward. I don't know where you are or what you're going through right now, but I do know this. In order for you and I, even as a church, to go forward, we must at times be willing to stand still and trust God. Will you bow with me in a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we come before Thee tonight and thank Thee again for Thy Word. We pray that, Lord, it would be used in mighty ways to speak to people. Lord, we pray that Thou wilt take Thy Word as we have uh, heard it tonight and use it for Thy glory. Lord, it's so hard to stand still. It's so difficult to not want to do anything. But help us, Lord, to trust in Thee. Help us to have expectation from Thee. Help us, Lord, to have great confidence in Thee. Help us, Father, to take our direction from Thee. And we commit all these things now to Thee in prayer. And I do ask, Lord, tonight, perhaps there is someone that's watching that doesn't know Thee as Lord, who's never come to know what it means to see salvation, to know that salvation is of the Lord. May tonight they come to know Thee before it's too late. We ask all these things tonight in Christ's name. For His sake we pray. Amen. We'll sing our closing hymn tonight. Another good hymn, a gospel hymn. It's Christ Liveth in Me. And so I want to invite you tonight, if you're wherever you are, let's sing this together. Christ liveth in me. Once far from God and dead in sin, no light my heart could see. But in God's word, the light I found, now Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. Oh, what a salvation this, that Christ liveth in me. As rays of light from yonder sun, the flowers of And light and love come forth from Christ living in me. Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. Oh, what a salvation this that Christ liveth in me. As lives the flower within the sea, as in the cone. wonderful to be together tonight. I hope that if uh, there's any way we can help you, you'll let us know. Please message down below and keep in touch. Uh, please let us know if there's any prayer requests at all. And we're praying for you and we're trusting. Please pray with us that God will open the door that we could be back together again. If there's any way we can help you, please let us know. But let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. And so I'd like to ask you where you are. Let's, let's bow together and pray. Oh God and Heavenly Father, we come to Thee again tonight. And Lord, we do take Thy word. Lord, we pray that Thou will please, Lord, use it in our hearts and lives in a mighty way. So, uh, Lord, it's so difficult to stand still and not do anything. But we know sometimes it's greatly needed. 
Help us to have great confidence and faith in Thee. Help us to trust in Thee, to not trust in ourselves, but in Thee. And Lord, help us to see Thy salvation. Lord, we pray that Thou will please work in people's hearts as we leave from here tonight. And please, Lord, speak to us throughout the week. Bring us back together again on Wednesday night, we pray. And we ask this in Christ's name. For Thy sake we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining with us. God bless.